For the last couple of years, I've invited uh, Patrick Thompson to be at our conference because I truly believe the importance of the National Racing Compact and licensing. Um, obviously, with multi-jurisdictional licenses, it does make it much more easy for owners to race in different states, and it's not as complicated as filing individually. <clears throat> Patrick's done a great job at explaining this, this benefit, uh, as I would like to consider it, for racing, and I wanted to give him again an opportunity to give some updates uh, on where they are now and also um, certainly answer any questions if anybody has. But Pat's going to be here, um, and I do strongly advise all horsemen to try to take as much benefit from Pat as possible. So uh, with that, I will introduce my good fishing buddy, Pat Thompson, and give him the opportunity to talk about the National Racing License Compact. Thank you all. Um, last year, I think I may have had to follow D. Wayne Lucas, and this year, the Attorney General, and I think it's probably payback for taking Eric up the river on a rickety boat. So, all right, so um, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about our online licensing system, but uh, first, I think it's important that we establish kind of what the compact is. Um, so the National Racing Compact is an interstate compact. We've got 15 member states. Uh, 10 participating states. Uh, as far as licensing owners, we can do, it, do that in all those states the same way. There's really not much of a difference, but the 15 member states have uh, delegates to our board. They actually govern the compact. Um, we allow <coughs> owners, trainers, jockeys, and drivers to get licensed through us. Um, the fingerprint card, the biggest thing is the fingerprint card. You submit it one time to us. Uh, one application and the fingerprint's good for the rest of your life. So we just use the same card. Anytime you need a card, we can just use that one. Uh, it's $300 for a three year membership to the compact. Um, it used to be $225. We raised it for the first time in 15 years last year. Um, <clears throat> we have a fingerprint machine in the office. You'll see over there, uh, that's a young lady that works for the USTA actually. Um, that's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I took it up there to fingerprint some folks. Uh, but we can do it in our office. It takes about five minutes, uh, and it'll be the last fingerprint card you ever have to do. Um, these are the list of the states. The member states, they, um, they all have delegates, like I said, and some of them have uh, <coughs> they passed legislation to join the compact. Some of these member states have people that are on our um, applicant review committee. Um, the participating states, they take the same application. Uh, the same fingerprint card works for them. A couple of them won't let us license trainers, but they all let us license owners. Um, <clears throat> so we can do any of those up there. Uh, here's, since we've got a couple different audiences, the benefits of the compact are um, for commissions, there's no cost to join, no cost to participate. Uh, the license criteria that we that set forth by the compact member states is um, stricter than any one state's criteria, um, still not that tough to, to get a license there, but you can be assured if you're a commission that you're getting, uh, you're getting somebody that will be approved in your state. Um, applicant Review Committee reviews any applications that we have any questions about. Um, Mr. S Tom Sage is on the uh, Review Committee, Doug Moore from Washington, uh, Joe Trapp from New Jersey, um, Mike Hopkins from Maryland. Um, so we can and do help your license clerks at the racetracks. Um, we help them fill their proof too. So we've got a big race on Saturday. Uh, a lot of times the license clerk will just ask me if I have a list of people. So that, that's kind of one of the things we do for the commissions. And the compact serves as an answer for uh, the issue of uniformity. So if, if people are often complaining to you about how many times they have to get fingerprinted, uh, how many times they have to fill out apps, you know, as a commission, this is something you could point to that's, uh, that solves that problem, really. But for licensees, same thing, provides one, one app, one, one fingerprint card, you can get licensed in all the states. Uh, our staff can help you with your stable license and your partnership. We have one app for a stable, too, that can be used across multiple states. Uh, we know partnerships are confusing. We can help guide you through that. We can do that for you, too. 
We don't charge anything for your stable app or your partnership app. It's included in your $300. So, um, <clears throat> and we do process urgent requests. We get requests people are racing today, racing tomorrow, all the time. I mean, probably 50% of what we do sometimes. So we can get your license quickly too. Uh, in some instances, uh, we know that you need a license before <laughs> you know that you need a license. So like if the states ask us to look at their proof and we see one of our customers on there, we get out in front of it, take care of it for them. Uh, and then we'll also remind you if you've got a renewal coming up. Now there's a look at our front of our application. It's a four page app, uh, stable application there. Like I said, we don't charge anything for that. Uh, there's a list of our offerings. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of the analog version of how we used to do it. But the real reason I'm here is to talk to you about our online licensing system that we're going to have. I've uh, been working on it for a couple of years now, just sort of inching along because there's a lot of nuance to it. But um, this is something, this is uh, how you register for the site here, a uh, little video for that. So you just go sign up just like you would for, <coughs> you know, anything else, Amazon, anything a lot simpler though. Um, once you're registered, you can fill out your license application right there. Uh, you don't have to fill it out that fast, <laughs> but uh, that's a double time on that. So uh, once you get that license application completed, then comes the point where we're going to need to collect your fingerprint card. So it'll send our staff an email. If you're close to Lexington, I would just advise you just come into the office anytime, you know, Monday through Friday, just waltz in. We'll have them done within five minutes. Once you submit your fingerprint card, we get that report back within about 15 minutes usually. So assuming everything's good with that, we can get your license, you know, pretty much right away. Uh, and this is the point for, the, for, our, for my commissions out there. This is the point where we take a look, make sure they fit the criteria, review the racing history uh, right here. So once we look at that, you get a nice little dashboard with your, you can upload a picture there for your badge. Um, our staff can print you a license off of this picture right here. And you'll have, you can see, you can have like, um, it lists your current licenses up top there. Um, all right, so next I wanna show you like, kind of what your application looks like after you after you went online and filled out your app. So this is like after staff have looked at it, they've approved your license. Um, this is what will actually go to the state racing commissions, this one app for every state. Now, we're still polishing this up a little bit. <clears throat> we're still in production, but we're, we're almost to finish the development stage of it. So you see your online app, you filled it out. This is good for three years. At the end of three years, we don't have to collect your fingerprints again. We just get a two-page renewal app. You'll be good to go off of that. Use the same fingerprints. I'll repeat that again because it's very important. All right, so next thing I want to show you, this is the big part here. So once all that's done, you filled out your app, you submitted a fingerprint card, uh, we've got you approved. From that moment on, you're free. You can go on this website and you can add licenses, you know, basically all you want. So this is a little video about that process there, kind of how that would work. You saw that I had some licenses added at the bottom, but we'll look at that again in just a second. So you'll just simply go over to add a license and you'll see like kind of a list of products here, just like you're shopping online. You know, and this is rather than have to fill out that app, you know, go to the dungeon and get fingerprinted or whatever you have to do. Every time you want to add a state, every time you find out your horse is going somewhere, you just go through here, browse, pick out what you want. Now, one thing I wanted to show you that we <coughs> found a little bug in it when I was making the slide, but the stable app can be filled out online as well. So, you know, all this will be on there, and it'll be filed over under your documents tab. You can see I'm just adding an owner's license for Delaware here. One year, $50. dollars this is where you would do your stable app under applicant information there. There's a step for stable app. We'll probably change the wording of that. See, I'm adding your NRC application. 
This is what the kind of like the package that will go to Delaware. All right. Showed you there that it's going to be expiring 1231. You'd be paying $50. Where you go on here and make your payment and see I've already paid for all the other applications. But the reason we're able to do this is that we have the 15 states that make up the compact and the states that accept it on reciprocity, the participating jurisdictions. You know, we have the authority by those states. Those those 15 states serve on my board. You know, no matter what you think of me, this is a good program for for horse racing here. All right, so I've added a state. There's a nice little list of where you're licensed there. Um, you know, you can go look at that at any time. You'll be able to put your stables on here. You'll be able to put your partnerships on here. Uh, you got your badge. Who knows what we might be able to do with that badge there. You, that may, you know, one day that might be your badge. Instead of having that, go get a physical badge. There'll be some work left to be done on that. But big thing, I guess, target release date. October 2023. We're going to try to get it out before renewal season. Now, if anybody out there is excited, they can't wait, <laughs> come talk to me because we're going to need some beta testers for this. Between now and October, we're going to we're gonna have to have some people try it out, see what they think about it. But, um, again, you'll be able to do stables. You'll be able to do partnerships. Uh, won't have to get fingerprinted again. Just go online and do it all. Now, for my commissioners, um, there's some stuff on the back end that I want to show you, but I'll show you all that. Uh, <clears throat> tomorrow we have a board meeting um, over in the ARCI room, and I can show you kind of what all happens on the back end um, to help you out there. But um, for more information, call us anytime. If I'm here this week, but normally I'm sitting there answering the phone Monday through Friday. You can email me anytime you want to. Um, we feel like this is really you know, one thing that, that we can point to that's, that we can say is, is, you know, a good thing for race, and we feel like it helps everybody, um, you know, something we're really proud of. I've been there for 18 years, so if you do the math, I was about 12 when I started, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the gist of it there. Um, anybody got any questions? <laughs> you don't have to do it ever again with us so we yeah we we take care of that for you yeah <clears throat> yeah we have that authority that we, we can just use your same ones again yeah i know the um you know your fingerprint cards you know your fingerprints never change and that's the thing but you know, most of the time the states have the authority to run them one time and that's it that's why you're asked to do them again but yeah with us you know that's it that's the last time you'll ever have to do it Well, to the actual user, you're not going to find them. Oh, yeah. So he was asking what the difference in a participating and a member state was. Yeah. To the, to the user, especially if you're an owner, there's really not, um, you know, you call us and ask for a license in a participating state like, um, you know, Indiana, then we can take care of it for you. you know, it's really no different to you. Um, <clears throat> the reason I put them up there, the member states, have passed legislation. They've got a seat on our board. They're they're um, you know they're invested in the compact. Really, I mean, it doesn't cost them anything, but it's their time. They volunteer to be on the compact board. So, um, you know, there's not much of a difference to you. But some of the participating jurisdictions, like, won't let us license trainers, for instance. We can only we can do owners only in those, which the bulk of what we do are really owners. And another nice thing is is. Trainers that have, um, you know, have a lot of owners and move around a lot, they'll send, they'll have all their owners go through us, and then the trainer will just call and say, you know, license all these folk in Arkansas or whatever for a race tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's, there's, there's not much of a difference. Good question, though. Anybody else?